College these days is getting more and more expensive. Many students' bank accounts hover right around zero. When I was going to school, I even had a few times when I overdrew my bank account, which meant my balance was actually negative. So let's say, for example, my account balance was negative $5.70, and without knowing it, uh, I went and just bought a candy bar for $1.15. What would be my bank balance, my account balance now? Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we are talking about subtracting rational numbers. Here we go. So my account balance was negative $5.70. So I'm spending more money than I actually had in this case, which is why it's negative. Uh, and then maybe I didn't know I withdrew or overdrew, and I just went and bought a candy bar like normal for $1.15. So the question is, what is my new balance? Well, when we buy something, we're actually taking money out of our bank account. We're withdrawing money. Uh, so that's like subtracting. So the problem we're going to set up is I'm starting with negative $5.70 in my bank account. I bought a candy bar for $1.00 and 15 cents, which means my bank account is not gonna increase, it's actually gonna get more negative, right? I'm gonna owe more money. So I'm gonna subtract $1.15. So that's essentially what's happening. And we know when we're subtracting integers, we've done that before, the subtracting an integer is the same thing as adding its opposite. The same rules apply when we're subtracting rational numbers, whether it's decimals or fractions or mixed numbers, the same rules apply. So subtracting an integer or a rational number, in this case, is the same as adding its opposite. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative $5.70 plus adding the opposite. This was a positive $1.15, so I'm going to add a negative $1.15. All we're doing is just changing it to an addition problem. And now we're adding two negatives, right? They're the same signs, so when we add them, I'm going to add these, uh, basically just look at, just look at the absolute value of them, add them together, and then my answer is going to be negative. So adding that together, 570 plus 115, line up the decimals, right? 115, and I get 5, 8, and 6. And then I got to remember these were negative, so my answer is going to be negative. So my new balance now is negative $6.85. Okay, and the bank would not be very happy with me. Okay, let's try an example. Example one, negative four and one seventh minus a negative six sevenths. Same thing we talked about before. Subtracting a rational number or an integer, it doesn't matter, is the same thing as adding its opposite. So my first step is I'm going to change this to an addition problem. So negative four and one sevenths doesn't change. Subtraction becomes addition. The negative six sevenths. The opposite of that is six sevenths. Okay. Now, I gotta think, okay, I've got a mixed number plus a fraction. There's multiple ways to do this. If you're really comfortable with fractions and mixed numbers, you could probably do this in your head and think, well, especially because they have common denominators already. Uh, but if not, an easy way to do this is to just change them change the mixed number to an improper fraction. So that's what we're going to do. So to change it to an improper fraction, I'm going to do the denominator times the whole number. So 7 times 4 is 28 plus 1 is 29. So I have negative 29 over 7. Denominator stays the same. Plus 
Since that's positive, I don't really need the parentheses anymore. So 6 sevenths. Denominators are the same, which is great. So all I need to do is add the numerators. So the denominator does not change. Negative 29 plus 6 is negative 23 over 7, which is an improper fraction. So I'm going to convert it back to a mixed number. 7 into 23 goes 3 times, and I would have 2 sevenths left over. And I have to remember it's negative, so that is negative 3 and 2 sevenths. Let's try another example. Okay, example two, 12.8 minus 21.6. This is going to be our last example. If you want to give this a shot on your own, pause the video and go for it. Here we go. Same thing. Subtracting a rational number, I'm going to change it to an addition problem first. So that's going to become 12.8 plus a negative 21.6. Now, Adding rational numbers, we've already done that. If you still need some practice, look at the previous video. But here, we've got different signs. We're adding a positive with a negative, which means some things are canceling out. And to figure out what's left over, we need to subtract. So I'm going to take the absolute value of these, right? The absolute value of 12.8 is just 12.8. Absolute value of negative 21 0.6 is 21.6, which means I'm going to subtract the greater number, 21.6 minus 12.8. 21.6 minus 12.8. I'm lining the decimals up again. I'm subtracting 12.8. Need to borrow zero. That becomes 16. Subtract, I get eight. Decimal points stay in line. Got to borrow again, that becomes 10, 8, and that's 0. Now, I need to remember, last step is I got to look which one had the greater absolute value. And that's the 21.6. And because that was negative, well, I'm going to have negative 8.8 .8 left over. Because basically, this negative cancels out all of that 12.8, and then there's still negative 8.8. Eight left over. Okay. Here's something to try on your own. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, if you like this video, please subscribe.